All right. Uh, Wendy. Yeah. As long as you're moving with the group, I'll say you can easily maintain your regular movement speed. Okay. But if you're on your own, we're going to say everything counts as difficult terrain as you have to feel your way forward. So it'll just be everyone else's regular movement speed. Exactly. <laughs> you can move at their movement speed as long as you're moving with the group. Yeah. So what's next? You know, I mean, this guy in the, the room next to you is still... Uh, yeah. still so wait, Adrix, do you have the eyes or do I have the eyes? Let's establish this before you leave. I, 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 I've already put them on my sheet. Okay. So, you can yeah. each have one. And there's enough to go around. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like uh, the problem with going in here to save this guy is that the space is not big enough and the guy that's small enough to fit through can't see. Well, right now the space is big enough to squeeze Birdie in, and Adrix is too exhausted to continue to try to pry it open. I'm assuming if you try to make me do another check, I'll incur a level of exhaustion. I'm just Wait. saying you're not going to be able to do another check. Can Red squeeze in? No, because Red is a medium-sized creature. Okay. We need to get... Well, Birdie, see if, he, well, see if you can find a mechanism to release the inside. But he, like, waves his hands in front of his face in, like, an up-and-down gesture and goes, Yeah, I'll get right on looking for that. All right, so he grabs one of his hands, puts hers against it. Use these. You're... So, just to clarify, Razu's asking Birdie to go into the torture chamber and kind of <laughs> feel around randomly? Yeah! Okay. Mm -hmm. Nothing can go wrong here. No. So this has been, like, wedged open with a crowbar partway? I think they just broke it. Yeah, they, they've dragged it open a couple notches along the track. It's mm -hmm. about, I don't know, maybe five or six inches of clearance. So enough space for Burry to squeeze through, but not anybody else. Maybe can I, uh, oh, can I go and take a better look and see if I can find any way to release it or any mechanism now that it's open a little bit? Make an intelligence investigation check. Make some space for you. Uh, Adrix has done his best to gauze over Wendy's eye sockets. Okay. That's a 20 on investigation. Okay. That doesn't confer any benefit to Wendy, but the rest of you are no longer grossed out by her disgusting face. I mean, she looks fine to me. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, no, yeah, looking Adrix around, was... uh, Red, the only thing you can think of is, I mean, you, your mind just keeps flashing back when you were inside that cell seeing the sparks off the rivets as you and Birdie were hammering at them. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that seems to be out of place. You don't find that secret compartment or like a hidden lever or a, a keypad or anything. Would that just uh, be dumb if I just threw a it. keypad in the middle of this campaign? Just one with no explanation? Oh, four, five, one. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could wait here and hope Birdie's sight gets better. We could... Frazu, you and I could try and force the door the rest of the way open. Probably, that'd probably be our best move then. I'll, uh, I'm, Bert, uh, Wendy, I'm gonna take this back and I'll kind of pull the crowbar off of her belt. Alright, you pull, I'll help. Mm -hmm. Wendy's like, wait, what? What did you take? I can't see. Okay, I need a. Who's actually gonna make this strength roll? Razu. Okay, go ahead and make that add advantage. No, that's pretty good. That's a 21. Two. Just just like before, I mean, your arms are starting to strain, and you're thinking this crowbar is going to go flying out of your hands. But very suddenly, the door lurches forward another couple of inches. Enough you and Red kind of... Red, you get his head through yet? Yeah, now there's enough space where medium creatures can squeeze in. All right, All right let me cool. see if I can find a release on the other side. And no, there's no release on the other side. There are lit torch sconces along the walls here. Mm -hmm. You see well. these two large autopsy tables in the center of the room. In the back corners along this back wall are implements of torture. Uh, you know, I'm not going to describe them. Just leave them to the imagination. Okay. This one what? in the center of the room is this man lashed on a stretching rack by his wrists and ankles. And then along the wall where Razu was standing here are just all kinds of just horrible things. Drills and serrated blades and 
all kinds of nasty things. All of them completely clean. <laughs> you said, you said, I'll leave it to your imagination. My mind immediately went SoundCloud rappers. <laughs> So how's this guy restrained? He's on a stretching rack, and you can see where he's been stretched. It looks like his elbows and knees have given out. Uh, and he's been hanging here some time. You can see there's no color left in his upper extremities at all. But it just looks like he's up there with leather straps, just bound really tightly to the point where they're biting into his skin. And he's human. And his eyes are also gone. Razu's not very inclined to help this guy, but she does say, what are, you, what are you willing to give for your freedom? And he says, please, if there's any decency in you, if there's any morality, if you, if you love the gods, you'll release me. Please, I beg you. Why don't you tell that to the prison camp that tortured people over and over again, just for the simple fact that they thought that they were subhuman. And he tells you that he knows nothing about any such camp. Please, it's... Please release him. He can no longer feel his his fingers or toes. Roger looks right, red. Red's going to pull out a dagger and do his but first he'll start on the ankles so that he doesn't just fall out and then okay. he'll, while he's holding his torso, cut the ones on his wrists. And he slumps forward into your arms and he lets out this very pained grunt as the blood starts flowing back into his arms. And I'll put him Is this table clearer now? Both of these tables are completely clear. Yeah, I'll, I'll lay them on the autopsy table. And he's laying there, and you can see he doesn't have any control over his arms and legs. They're all, they've all been broken on this stretcher. And he's laying there, he has pained and ragged breathing. And I don't speak under common. What, does he speak South Southron? He's speaking, he's been speaking in under common up to this point. Yeah, I'll ask him, do you speak, what did we call that? I think it was Southling. Southling? Southling. 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 And he responds in the Southling tongue. And he tells you, thank the gods that more people have come. Have you come from Melvin Ponce? Have you come to rescue us? Razu spits when she hears the Southling tongue. Oh, so you're one of the Lemex. He says that he was a A, uh, I don't have any vocabulary words. All the vocabulary words are gone. He was... A dude? You know, I don't have any eyes, so... No <laughs> sympathy from here. He was assigned... Well, neither does he. Like, you're in the same boat. He was assigned to... The Crusade. To bring... Heavenly Guidance. Are you a soldier, a retainer, a commander, tactician, cook? He shakes his head and he tells you that he is a pacifist. He doesn't fight, if that's what you're asking. Well, then what, what did you do? Why, what were you, what was your, why were you crusading? But like you personally. He tells you that his task was to, at mealtimes, to lead the men in prayer, to tend to their spiritual needs, to make sure they were... Retained connection to the gods, so as not to lose their favor. Do you know the uh, path from here to the Sunlit Lands? He describes that the path that he marched, and he's describing a journey that would take weeks. South through the Mushroom Forest, beyond that into a series of craggy valleys. Beyond that, under the watchful eye of a nearby uh, Dwergar kingdom. And then beyond that, into a place which is well known to them in Melvin Ponce. Uh, a place where there are many entrances between the Underdark and their lands. And then he kind of... He says, forgive me, my friend. Perhaps I should not be skeptical, but I cannot place your accent. Hmm. Can you tell me Somewhere the name north. of the village where you're from? Far north. And he rattles off the name of some human village uh, to the south of the wall. He's, do you mean from thereabouts? Yeah, abouts. <laughs> he says, this, your tongue is strange to my ears. I've... Forgive me, I should not complain. The gods have so you would, delivered you to me. 
would you be able to guide a group back to the Sunlit Lands if they could carry you? And he motions to his face and he tells you, sadly not. <laughs> Even if they described what they were seeing? Like, you seem to at least have an idea of the path. Because the people we're with don't. The people we're trying to rescue. He tells you that one of their number fell in battle in one of the rooms on the upper level of the tower. That he did what he could to uh, preserve the man's body. He spoke the words of the church to make sure that his remains would not rot away. And that they secured it so that they could come back with a retrieval party later to take the rest of the plunder and retrieve his body so they can be brought back for resurrection. And I'll, uh, I'll just tell the others in common, we should bring him back to the foyer where we came in. Leave him with Wait, the other no, I'm sorry, what was that last bit? <laughs> last bit of what? Did you say something about resurrection? I'm not inclined to... I mean, if, for what it's worth, I don't think Red has actually been translating the, the conversation for you guys. Oh. Okay. Well, what do you want from us? Why are you asking us questions? We don't know shit. <laughs> Is there uh, anything in here that would make do for a stretcher? You could probably well, cobble one together. So this back alcove is fucking horrifying. Mm -hmm. Looking around this corner, starting from about here, it starts to slope sharply downwards. And a good, like, maybe three or four feet in, it starts to be soaked with blood. This area is made out of the same material as the metal hallway outside. It's no longer made of stone. And it just descends into darkness for about 30 feet and then drops off. And you see streaks of blood leading down in that direction. A and further than that, probably at the edge of where you can see with your dark vision, you're not... The only thing you can compare it to is just like the very basic motion of maybe tree branches swaying in a very gentle breeze. You just see the barest hints of that motion and you can't identify what it is. But it's pervasive. It's all over the place out there. There's something moving down there. I don't like the idea of staying here for too long. So yeah, can I lash anything together here to build a makeshift stretcher? Yeah, I mean, there's enough leather here and uh, things that can be dismantled that you can put together a stretcher for him. Adrix, can you at least get this guy's uh, body so it won't be incredibly painful to move him once I get him on the other side of the door? Because, yeah, we gotta get him through the door, and looks like... Yeah, no once we get him on the... I'll... I'll, here, Wendy, carry these back through the door, and I'll hand her the components for the stretcher. Man, I, like... <laughs> I'm just... I've been following the story about those kids buried in that cave for the past week. Like, that's yeah. exactly... It's immediately brought this to mind. Yeah, let's lash him to a stretcher, dope him up, and then cargo lift him down through this tight corridor. All Except right. you're not going to dope him up, right? You're just going right. to... Nope, me and Adrix just gonna do our best to get him through the door, and then we can do something about that. And for his part, I mean, he winces in pain, but he does not complain or cry out. He just, he bears it stoically. Okay, let's get a stretcher together. Adrix, do what you can to keep us from... I don't think, you know, I don't think we can really avoid doing more damage just because there's not much of this guy left, but... Mm. So when you're and speaking to your companions, what language are you speaking? Common. Common? Yep. And he hears, he listens to this for the while. And... Adrix, make an insight check, since you're the one who's actually binding this guy to the stretcher as Red's giving just instructions. Uh, that is a... 19... He's listening as you and Red and the rest of you are conversing in common about how to safely get him out of there. 20. And you can see that he very clearly doesn't like what he's hearing. He looks very nervous all of a sudden. So you know how I mentioned before, guys, that I hate stairs? 
<laughs> Do you hate stairs more now? <sighs> We've established Southling as its own tongue, right? Right. Yeah, yeah I'm the only one in the group that speaks it. Right. Idrix pats the guy. I'm assuming it's South Southling. Southling is their common. Exactly. Like, I'm assuming yes, yes. speak the same language as everybody else. Adric sees the dude not liking the situation he's in, and he gives him a gentle pat and says in a language that he probably doesn't understand, Don't worry, you're fine. Relax. What do you say that in? Uh, just in, in our common. Okay. <laughs> and you, favorite. looking at his face, you see he gets no reassurance from this. He looks very <laughs> confused and very nervous. Yeah, what else? No. All right, and two of us, let's just bring him back to the entrance. Okay, so you're taking him back up to where... Bronzel and the rest of them are waiting. Yeah, and then I guess we can finish our way up the tower this time. Let's make sure Razu. I save the correct board here. Razu does not deign to carry this guy out. Didn't ask you to. Alright, I have to go let my dog back inside because now he's being a dog. Yeah, but she's grumbly muttering behind us. Oh, I, I'm completely aware. That's why I didn't ask her. There you go. I have upgraded the dice jail. Dice gulag. Nice. <laughs> wow. They are political prisoners of their bad die rolls. Yeah. <laughs> In my gulag. So to actually get where you're going, you guys got to climb back up to the second floor. In this staircase, go through the hallway where you all have to close your eyes. Mm -hmm. And then down, down the rope that you are dangling from the second level balcony. Yep. I think what we do is we use some kind of, like, we don't have, like, a winch or anything like that. I, I, might have a, I feel like there's a block and tackle in one of the starter kits. Let me see if it was mine. I have a block and tackle. I thought Cause, so. Because of course I do. Well, Bertie, good job. See, so you guys go up this staircase up to the second floor. Back around and you set up this block and tackle to lower this guy down into the central room with the ashen fountain. You all climb down and haul him back to the door. <laughs> Bronzel and the other six remaining prisoners are still there. And he stands up when he sees the state of this man. Good lord, what happened to him? Good news, we've replaced one of them. He, he, was, of a, he was a guest of the, uh, of the Tender Graces. She says with no humor. We did find out. Uh, uh, did Red uh, explain anything this guy said? Yeah, all of all of ex all of translated the. Yeah, I'll translate all of it over the course of the. It'll take a lot while to move him, so I'll let you guys know everything that he said. Okay. So we found out that they're, uh, the humans are supposedly coming back. The Wimics. I'll just say in under common or in you know in our common, you don't actually believe that, do you? Uh, <laughs> Because I don't. That, that sounds like something you, you tell people to keep them fighting for you. I'm not saying if I said that about you, that I won't come back for you. I'm just saying. Most people? I, I love the way you, uh, you preface that with, like, but not me. Red, why are you thinking about abandoning us? <laughs> I'm not. I'm thinking about Bertie's poor, fragile self, sense of self-worth. Why? <laughs> because someone has to, obviously, and it's not Bertie. I'm standing literally right here. Where are you guys standing when you're having this conversation? <laughs> we're, we're with uh, humans at this point. Okay. Who was the last person to leave which... the central room? Adrix. Oh, well, no, Adrix is going to the duty camp. Uh, I guess mm. Bertie. Razu. Oh, go ahead. I thought you were carrying the dude. And Bertie, no, you hear the pleading voice from the fountain. Beseeching you for help. Razu throws that thing the middle finger. You didn't hear it. Bertie heard it. Oh. I mean, Bertie has lost all faith in fountains at this point. <laughs> uh, 
That's so sad. I know, his childlike innocence. The love of Bernie with fountains was beautiful. Bronzel and the Bound Man have a conversation in Southling. And... I mean, I guess a guy with no eyes can still weep. Like, he still has tear ducts. That yeah, would sting would... quite a lot. But he does. Uh, I mean, he begins. Over right now. He begins weeping, and the conversation right you're listening to is Bronzel's trying to calm him down and reassure him. Uh, he introduces himself and tells you uh, what you and your companions have done for them so far, leaving out, perhaps strategically, the part about bringing a banshee to life and killing half of them. I mean, we didn't bring a banshee to life. It's undead. We brought it to undead at last, <laughs> at best. And when he asks the man his name, the man goes to answer and then stammers out for a moment and tells you that he can't recall it. And then he that's when he begins sobbing. He says, by the gods, they've taken my name from me. That and Bronzel very seems very nice. concerned. So they, uh, I'll just look at Bronzel. So I guess they didn't just work over his body. And Bronzel smiles sadly and tells you that the Dark Elves very rarely do. Right. If Red had any emotion, there would be some in that statement, but he doesn't. <laughs> so what's next? I mean, Bronzel shows... Do we want to rest, or...? Yes, yeah. please. please okay. please, so, please. Bronzel shows a lot of concern for Wendy as well. Wendy just kind of, like, pats his hand <laughs> shittily. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I mean, it's a, it's a thing coming towards me, so I could probably feel it. <laughs> I got that monk bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do you need to see things to deflect arrows? No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> so the one party member that went permanently blind <laughs> can still snap an arrow out of the air and fire it back at you something tells me that nodal has gone through the entire monk class with a fine tooth comb making sure that nothing says that you can see <laughs> <laughs> yeah everybody can go ahead and take the benefit of a short rest yes birdie over the course of the oh, short rest your short vision so comes good. back and your headache subsides I'll go into detail while they're resting about the conversation I had with the drow. What? what? You mean the, the presence down there? The ghost, yeah. Um, I mean, basically, it seems like that one's as much of a slave to the mistress here as any of the uh, any of her other ones. And I was able to convince it that we would probably kill her, and that would hopefully release it. Shitty roll. Bronzel, with a little bit of concerns, asks you if that's a promise you intend to keep. I mean, my assumption is releasing a spirit like that will probably just cause it to dissipate. He tells you, be that as it may, no, no benevolent force would punish you for breaking your word with one of their kind. Mm. Believe me, I've already stabbed one trow in the back. I'm not going to be gun shy about doing it again but at the same time that thing i don't even want to call it a drow at this point was not so i was seeing inside its mind and i saw something that i can't really explain but it's like imagine if you were so exhausted that you felt like you could die only you couldn't now multiply that by a few hundred years i i don't think it once it's released from service it'll even have the energy to be a spirit anymore and he tells you that he'll defer to your expertise in such matters, that this is outside of his realm of knowledge. Oh, you should you should actually check with Adrix. He's an expert on elves. Don't worry, Wendy will say waving his hand in the wrong direction. <laughs> We're an expert on ghosts. I had sex with an elf. And Bronzel, his face beams, and he says, I have as well. <laughs> and he starts listing them. Adrix is jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so everybody took the benefit of the short rest. Is anybody spending hit dice or anything? I guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Adrix did. 
I'm actually full up. Haven't gotten hit yet. Haven't used any abilities. Oh, weird. <laughs> you know how that works. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't sound like Nodal's mad or anything. Hey, I got you out of that thing, didn't I? Yeah, thanks, by the way. <laughs> I meant to thank you for that. Sounds like Nodal's mad about something, guys. <laughs> Never it's... will understand anger. <laughs> I guess it's some sort of misplaced thing because you're upset at losing your eyes. That makes some sense. He's like, they're not really lost, though. Like, Adrix just has them. They're right there. So what's next? Up the stairway, right? Yeah. Saw what fresh hell was downstairs. Let's see what new fresh hell is upstairs. Uh, which one? Number six over here? Seven. We've been to the top of six. Yeah, six yeah, goes up to the, the library. library. Uh, go yeah. up seven. Yeah. Are you getting there by the same means? You're going to go back into the center chamber, climb the rope, and go through the the trapped hallway. Yep. yep. Okay. Adrix is. Who's the, the last person up this rope? Adrix. Adrix, you hear an elvish. The small voice from the fountain pleads with you to to help her. And Adrix turns and looks at the fountain and says, Oh man, it's all, it's totally going to work this time! As it goes up the rope. <laughs> That's good because, you know, ghosts really appreciate being snarked at. I mean, the one did. Not, not today. Sounds like you actually know they do because they're ghost experts. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going up the stairs from 11. Do I have that correct? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. Hey, wait, Wendy doesn't have to close her eyes in 12 anymore. Yeah. That, that, that's tiny triumph right there. Everything's coming up Millhouse. <laughs> okay, let me make sure that I'm deleting the right part here. Uh, Rez is going to need to light a new torch because we need to stop for a break. Okay, you come up the staircase into room 24 here. And... One torch left. I don't have the book that I need. It's still over there on my shelf. Well, darn. Actually, it's not. It must be in my bag. So I will go retrieve that. All right, I'm going to brew some tea. We'll be right back. So in attempting to retrieve one book from my bag, I managed to spill all of them out onto the floor. Good job. Yeah, I got that going for me. Hope Peanut yells at you and makes you pick them up. Rude. And then I will describe this room to you. I don't need these numbers anymore. Okay, so it's very similar to the other uh, stone spiral staircases you've climbed. This does seem to be the top floor, so this room is mostly a circular landing with the stairs spiraling downward from here. Um, just like before, there's a center column in the center of the room, so you can't actually look down to the floor below. And is there a door at the top, right do you say? Here is one of the same kind of heavy wooden doors that you've been seeing all throughout the complex. However, this one has a clock face on the front of it. Uh, just a standard clock face with Roman numerals going around it clockwise. Uh, What's it set to? It's not. There's no hands. Oh. And Birdie and Red, you notice part of the stonework in the wall down here has crumbled away, revealing a small opening into the wall. Like, mouse hole? It's big enough for... Yeah, mouse hole would be a good approximation of it, but only you two notice it with your insane passive perception. Wendy, what's your passive perception? Uh, 17. 
Mm. No, it's still 17 because I got earring like a hawk. Okay. You can't hear the hole, though. Uh, it's got wind going through it. <laughs> uh, no, actually, the air is very still. I think Rico just did that just to poop on Noodle. No, I was right, trying to I poop don't understand. on. Why would you think that? I was trying to poop on Birdie. Are you kidding me? I tried really hard to pull his eyes out of his head. <laughs> uh. All right. So, has anyone seen any clock hands? Sure don't. Why are we... Sorry. Why are we looking for clock hands? The door has a clock face on it, and I assume there's no other like latch or keyhole. Okay. No, it has a latch, right? just like the other doors. Okay. It's similar to all the other wooden doors you've seen. Just this one has a decorative oh. clock face on the. Well, front. let me let me search for traps before we do anything else. Okay. So this is investigate of uh, that's plus nine, fourteen. Fourteen. Going over the door, you don't see any overt traps. However, oh, well, how are you searching? Just visually, just looking at it. Uh, I'll do a quick look over it, and then if I don't see anything, I'll take a uh, scraper out of my thieves' kit and just kind of run it over it, make sure there's no illusions, make sure there's no uh, places there's like a some a latch or anything like that that'll move easily. There is a keyhole to this door, and when you place your little scraper inside the keyhole, about an inch or so in, you feel like a length of wire, and it has a significant. Uh, like, it's pulled taut. You're pretty sure if you open this door, that wire will catch. What it'll do, you have no idea. But it's definitely there. And you're not sure you could disable it. I don't have anything I can get into there and snip the wire, the keyhole. You can try. I'll let you try to make that roll. Yeah. Fix every thieves tools. Okay. That should be pretty good. I need to write this number down. You fail and an arrow shoots out and hits the back of the door because we haven't even <laughs> fucking opened it yet. <laughs> the door reaches out and takes both of Red's eyes. 24. 24. I'm going to write that number down. You get in there with your tension probe and maybe the tip of a scalpel from Adrix's kit and you manage to snip the bronze wire and you hear metalwork start to turn. You hear gears and springs start to move. And it's very loud for a manner of seconds on the other side of this door, out in this area here. And then it winds down again after maybe 20 or 30 seconds. And then inside the door you hear a bizarre sound that sounds like a thread spooling. And then when you go back with your pros, you realize... This bronze wire has regrown in place, essentially. Another length of wire is now pulled taut. Hmm. Now that's rude. Well, it sounded like it was all coming from the other side of the door. Let that's a like clever, clever trap. Traps that don't say stay sprung. I have to remember that one. We don't know that it's a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> Birdie's the expert. Uh, Birdie, I'll let you actually go ahead and make an intelligence and add your proficiency to this because you have your trap setting skill. Okay, uh, that would be 6, 18, 24. Even the most sophisticated traps that you're familiar with If this trap was meant to prevent people from opening this door, it couldn't work in this manner. It sounds more like opening the door is a trigger to set something in motion in the room beyond. You're reasonably confident that actually opening the door should be safe, providing you can unlock it. Now the question is, does Birdie say that, given that he just thought Wendy's an idiot for saying it? <laughs> Well, uh, the difference is Wendy was guessing. Birdie actually knows because this is his <laughs> expertise. Uh, like, has anybody like tried the handle? Not yet. Not yet. That's why I was checking for traps first. Well, while he's trying the handle, I'm gonna like drop down and look in the hole, look in the mouse hole. 
Look at the mouse hole? Do you have a yeah. a light source? I mean, we can get one. Not that you have one, is my question. No. Okay. Razu has one. Looking in, Birdie, you can't see anything. And when you hunker down to take a look, you start hearing a voice in your head that says, Leave us. Ah, these guys again. Okay. <laughs> Wait, what? Creepy hmm? hole. Creepy wall hole. Birdie's gonna get up and go, yep. Yep. It's, it's, the, it's the wall hole people again. Like, I think it was Razu that... Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. now I remember. Now I recall. In the war club. Yeah. Yeah, Razu punches the bridge of her nose for a second. Takes a deep breath. Okay. Guess you just leave it be, then. They haven't been overtly hostile. Alright, so do we want to try this door? We got nothing else to do. So, I mean, if... Birdie says that... If Birdie says that it's, uh... Should be safe to open, then... I'm, I'm willing to believe that. Until something I mean, explodes. Alright, I'll oh, check the door. Point. Is it locked? It is locked. Alright, let's try and go ahead and pick that lock. Okay. Everyone else get behind the pillar at the center of the room. Sounds good. Uh, that would be a... 21. 21. Give me just one second here. Time's up. Are you getting smart with me, son? Only a little. I'm gonna take your eyes, too. <laughs> Everybody's just blind. My eyes are garbage. Look under your seat, and... You get nine. You get nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the door unlocks. Okay. And then I will tie a length of rope to the handle, move back to here, and give it a good hard pull. So you're moving to the okay all the way to the back wall. Yep. Just run the rope around it and around that big pillar. Pull the door open, revealing the hallway beyond. I don't hear anything going off. Nope. That's good. So, the door's open, right? Yeah. I'm gonna walk over and look in the... the look in the, uh... the keyhole of the door for that piece of wire. And it's been pulled. Whatever it did, it's doing it right now. You can hear the gears turning, and this time they're not winding down. What's going on? And Birdie, looking into this hallway, you can see there's nice plush carpeting along the length of the hall. And there are little alcoves set along either wall with beautiful artwork uh, depicting what passes for nature scenes in the Underdark. Including some of the mushroom forests you've traveled through. Beautiful plush carpet. Oh yeah? Uh, do you un untie the rope from the handle? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. So I'll untie the rope from the handle, and then I'll take out my short sword and stab the carpet. <laughs> you stab the carpet. Does it, like, cause psychic damage this time? Nope. It is only a gazebo. <laughs> well, in that case, I'm going to uh, grab, uh, use my, to pull the carpet into the room with me. <laughs> so you're grabbing the carpet, you're just pulling it, the rug across? Yeah. And as you do, uh, you see, instead of stonework in the floor, there is uh, a floor, but it's not made of stone. It's made of what looks like a, a metal mesh. And beneath it, you're uncovering turning gears and sprockets and all kinds of moving parts. And in fact, uh, yeah, your dark vision can see from here. The other door on the far side, instead of being a wooden door like the one you just opened... Again, it's made of this wire mesh with all these moving parts in it. And they're all really busy with activity. Uh, and you drag the carpet into room 24. Okay, just pile it up like over here. Okay. And, uh... Hmm. Do we have anything sticky? I 
I know I don't, because I, mean, I looked at my inventory for it earlier. I mean, I've got a little bit of gum arabic in my kit, but I, it's not enough to, like, do anything other than maybe pull a latch. Like, how big is this- how- how thick is the mesh? Like, how big are the holes in the mesh? Probably you could slip a finger down in there, if you wanted to. Could I slip some uh, rope down in there? Mm, probably your length of rope would be too wide. Maybe if you string. unravel it. String, you definitely could. I mean, I have string too, but like, like I was, I don't know if the string would be strong enough to gum up the, the parts. No, if you put a length of string down here, it wouldn't do much of anything. Let's see, let's see what it does first before we break it. Like, do you want to step on the, into the scary mechanical hallway? And I'll push my way past Birdie. Hmm. And Wendy steps answer. into the scary mechanical hallway. All right, what am I standing there? You're standing on this wire mesh. And I'm asking you... Birdie because oh. I can't see shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're standing on the scary mechanical wire mesh. And then to either side, she's got these alcoves in the wall with this artwork depicting oh. nature scenes. What do the walls look like? That is what the walls look like. They're alcoves with artwork in them depicting nature scenes. Pull one of the... Yeah, I'll take. I'll try to take one of the paintings off. Okay, you reach into the alcove and you're just touching the bare stone of the wall. They're painted onto the backs of these alcoves. I'll say it's just painted right on. Oh. Mm -hmm. And it's just nature scenery for the Underdark. Mm-hmm. What's it? What's it over here, Razu? Still just more nature. Yep. Coming up to the door now. Alright. And the door has the same wire mesh on the front of it. it. Looks like you could slip your fingers into it. Like you could you could like grab it and shake it if you wanted to. You could get a firm hold on it, but yeah. you're not gonna be able to like slip a dagger inside. Is there, Is there a, like a doorknob? Open? No. Wendy? Is there like a doorknob? There's not. And what did Red say? I was just asking if there was an obvious way to open it or a lock. Or Not an obvious like one. I'll try to like slide it to the sides, like the doors that we saw earlier. Okay, so you mean you grab hold of this wire mesh, you're trying to slide it and move it every which way. Yeah. Okay. Could I get my crowbar in the spaces between the the mesh and pry it open? Wendy, you start rattling it like a like a cage and back and forth, and it feels like with enough strength you might be able to lift it up like a portcullis. Alright. But, I mean, it's, it's the entire bulk of this metal work should be lifting up, not just the wire itself. Where's Birdie at? Back in the door. I still haven't gone in this scary mechanical hallway. I'm okay. still just messing with the right here by the entrance. Okay. Yeah, with enough muscle, Wendy, you're pretty sure you could just lift this up like a portcullis. Does it, it feel like it's, like that's breaking it or does it feel like it's supposed to be lifted no you can definitely feel like it's probably got toothed gears on either side of it and they'll roll up but it's going to require a little bit of force all right and i'll move back i'll say i'm not strong enough to lift it but it feels like you are you can do it. it oh okay yeah, then yeah. i'll lift it up and you get down there and you lift this thing up all the way into the ceiling and you hear once it's in place something catch and more gears kick in. Nice. Revealing the room beyond. Well, I mean, not really. <laughs> uh... I hate this puzzle. Alright, so... Do you hate the has... puzzle, or do you hate that you can't see the puzzle? <laughs> <laughs> so 12 has the ribbon, uh, 6 has the, uh, the limit break <laughs> item. You motherfucker. I'm sorry. <laughs> Stepping into this room, it is an enormous circular chamber, and it's actually pretty well lit. The whole floor here is this wire mesh with lots of gear and metal works underneath it. Uh, most of the wall is comprised of the same kind of stone as the rest of the complex, but you do see patches of it where there are these wire meshes set into the walls. Uh, at 12 equal intervals around the room. There are also three clock hands. Hopefully you guys can see these colors. We're going to go with this nice like, yep, sea green. 
Red, I'm gonna assume you're describing this to me because I, the player Nodal, will go insane <laughs> if I don't yeah. know what's going on in the rooms. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Yeah, Red will describe everything for Wendy. Oh yeah, I'm seeing red. There were three cock clock green. hands. I almost said cock hands. This stream almost went R-rated. Uh, three clock oh. hands. One of them is... Only one of them is above the wire mesh. It looks like all three of them are connected to a small central pillar in the middle of the room. Sticking up out. This is a large vaulted chamber. So overhead... Uh, how high up? That's a good question, Brick Road. Did I write this down? About 60 feet overhead. A large domed chamber. And there's ambient light coming from the top of the dome. Where it's very bright near the ceiling. Tapers off a little bit to where you guys are. So it's not blinding you down here. The f first hand is the only one that sits above the wire mesh of the floor. It's long and thin and looks very, very sharp. The second one is just underneath the wire mesh. It's made of a different sort of material. It's a different color. It's shorter and much fatter. And it's hard to look at. It's also pointing at 12. And when I say hard to look at, I mean... Like, it almost looks like a mirage. It looks like it's warping the space around it. And when you say second hand, you mean in ordinal value, not it's the time representation of seconds. Probably, well, I, I would seriously doubt Red's ever seen a clock. <laughs> but no, this would be the minute hand. This is the hour hand. And then there's a third one. Sitting oh. even more inward. This one doesn't look like it has any physical apparatus at all. It looks like it's just made of some kind of ghostly material, like smoke or mist, and it's giving off a very dull light. And it's stubbier than the others? You automatically fail that question because you're blind. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, it looks like it's shifting a lot in shape and size. Okay. At some moments it looks longer than others, some moments it doesn't. Some moments the light is one color, some moments it's another. But right yeah. now, all three of them are pointed at 12. It's a goddamn Heisenberg arm. All right, um, we're going to move my way around the wall and check out this door before doing anything else. Okay, what are the uh, rest yeah, of Yeah, I've described all of this. What are the rest of you doing? I'm going to examine the, the hand that's above the... Uh... The, the long, thin, sharp... So which one's above the ground? This the green one here. Turquoise one. Yeah. Okay. How far down underneath the mesh are these two? The red one, the one that's kind of warpy and miragey to look at, is directly underneath the mesh. If you had a long, thin implement, you could go through the mesh and poke at it. The ghostly one, you're not real sure. It looks like it's changing distance as you look at it. And red, this door looks very similar to the previous one. It's a wire mesh door with the workings inside of it. And you if watch I, Wendy uh, just lift it like a portcullis. Yeah, if I just give it a quick tub, does it tug up? Does it feel like there's some give? It does. But what actually happens is this door over here slams back shut. And now we roll initiative. Yeah. I'm going to fight this clock. <laughs> Fighting time, and, and nobody got the uh, and nobody got the clock weapon, so we can't stop time here. There's gonna be Medusa heads everywhere. If there are. I'm leaving. And after this door slams shut, you see some of these alcoves along the wall, the places with the mesh in the stone with gears behind them. The mesh slides away, and the gears kind of congeal. As clockwork golems step out of the wall in all twelve places. Oh, come on. Birdie shouts, I didn't do it. No, I know you didn't do it. One of them Watch steps right out of the door here, Red. That's rude. Enjoy that. Mm-hmm. 
I should have actually just saved a second version of this map, so I didn't have to do all this. With all the tokens? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Road's not taken. All right. You put, like, most of them directly on lines, and I just wanted you to know how much that's bothering me. Before anybody does anything. So the highest initiative is birdie at 20? Yep. Okay. I am fucked. It's me. Okay. Birdie, Windy, and Rasu. Uh, please do making a dexterity saving throw. DC 16. Already made it. Uh, Razu passed, surprisingly. Um, you get plus three to this, Windy. Windy made it. Okay. Everybody passed? Yep. Yeah. As this metal hand, all three of the hands move simultaneously, but the metal one's sweeping faster because it's much longer, and all of you just definitely step over this bladed material, and none of you are caught off guard by it. I'm putting these directly on the numbers just for my own edification so I know what we're dealing with here. But it's act, remember, it's not actually this long. This one goes the, all the way to the length of the room to the wall. This one about halfway, and then this one is very difficult to see. But I'm going to put them on the number. Just my own bookkeeping is easier like that. I've got a lot to yeah. keep track of. Can we label play. them? Okay, you did. Thank you. Short oh, no, I right. did that. <laughs> Thank you, Nodal. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> it's hard to do, too, because I can't even see them. Yeah, I'm about to get ten clockwork going up the face. Okay. Oh no. Yeah, bear with me one second, I can make one more note here. If they throw anything though, I got your back. <laughs> <laughs> no you don't, because you're on the other side of the room. That's why I got his back, I'm looking at it. <laughs> no you're not. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, Birdie, you're up. I'm going to shoot the clockwork golem next to red. Over here, by the door? Yes. Very good. Yes. And that is a crit. A crit, okay. I hate to see that happen to someone. Good thing you're blind. Wow. All right, I'm putting you in timeout. <laughs> <laughs> should, should we put him in dice pink? <laughs> Does he have to be now? I thought he was already in timeout. Is he in double timeout? Like what? Happened? So that is uh, 38 points of damage. Do you yeah. you do double the the the, the bonus? You, you, like you double the every. You don't double the bonus. Okay, so then. It's oh 35. no no yeah yeah the static is does. the same. So how much? 30, 35. 35. Gotta get calc.exe. Oh, oh, shit. <laughs> okay. And you put an arrow in this thing in red. I mean, you see it shudder, and this thing's... I'm sorry, it doesn't shudder. You see it kind of take the impact of the arrow, but its actual joints and gears and things are completely motionless. Now it just has an arrow mm -hmm. sticking out of it. Birdie, moving or staying put? Thing put. Red, you're up. Are these golems like humanoid? Vaguely humanoid. They're about your size. Uh, okay. it's, I'm a, you, as an action, I'll let you make a perception check to get more details. Because at a glance, I mean, you're I, just seeing lots of parts. At, at a glance, do they have like massive blades for hands or anything like that? No, not that you can tell. Okay. Cunning action, disengage. Okay. I got your back, Adrix. Ah. Uh, Right. Pull out my bow, ready in action to shoot any golem that's adjacent to Adrix. Shoot anyone who's adjacent to Adrix? Not any one, any golem. Any golem. Okay. Windy. Alright. Windy. Oh, bullshit monk. And, oh, well, to be can clear, you hear me? I can hear you, but you can't hear any of these golems. Right now, they've stepped out of the wall, and that's it. That's all the sound they've made so far. Alright, then I'm going to shoot the impact that Birdie just made. Okay. Okay. 
pair of 20s. Pair of 20s. No. A uh, 11? <laughs> okay, bear with me one second. That's 11 to hit. Yeah. Okay, 11 does not hit. And 19. 19 hits. That's five piercing magical. Okay. Oh, wait. Uh, five plus uh, four, so nine altogether. Nine? Yeah. And is Whitney moving or staying put? I am going to key point to dodge. Key point dodge, okay. Doing quick calculations in my head. I didn't die on you. All right. We're going to start with... Uh, probably... probably Imagine, how Rasu. Imagine how mad you must be if you like make a fucking clock puzzle in your horrible dungeon and then a bunch of adventurers show up who don't know what a clock is <laughs> <laughs> well you guys are like weird unsophisticated monsters so yeah basically what's this I don't know shoot it <laughs> okay kick it Ross is weird lines hey I have an eight not gonna do it. And a 24. That'll do it. Please be taking four points of piercing damage. As this golem here didn't stop moving, lifts up its arms, and then fires them at you. And you realize the arms are like lances attached to heavy chains. These chains uncoil from its system. The first one deflects off your shield, and the second one pierces you in the side. And then it whips back and retracts the lances. Oh my god, they have rocket punches. How cool is that? Windy. Yeah. I'm rolling at disadvantage because... No, I'm not. No, you're not. You're <laughs> rolling it straight up normal. You're rolling it normal. I got a 23. Yeah. A 7. Nah. And a 16. Nah. Everyone else watches as this one lifts up one of its legs, so three of its limbs fire off as lances towards Windy. And two of them, she definitely gets out of the way. One of them cuts her across the leg, pleased to be taking six points of piercing damage. Then he retracts his lances. To be clear, it shot it at me? <laughs> Doesn't sound a ranged attack, though. Come on, man. He just has a threat range of the entire room. Oh, Brick. The thing on. is, you wouldn't be able to catch this and throw it back at him. It's not oh. It's not ammunition. It's a lance. Birdie. You're not dodging or anything, are you? No. Okay. And the one down here at four. I have a 23. Uh, yeah. As he hits you with his lance. For five points of piercing damage. I think I figured out how it works. <laughs> Adris. Yeah. yeah. I need you to make a... Oh, Jesus. Constitution saving throw. You should be proficient in those. Oh, he got one. He got one. He got one? Yeah. That's 12. A 12? That's a 10. The one standing here fires a lance at Birdie and then turns towards you and you see what looks like a brass horn protrude from its chest and it blows out this deafening sound wave that just hits you like a solid wall. You're stunned until the end of your next turn. Oh, boo. And then he takes another turn. Birdie. I have, a, I have an eight. No, not going to do it. No, sorry. No? I accidentally okay. muted my microphone. <laughs> no, it, it won't hit me. And then he turns back to Adris a second time and blows this horn once again, blasting him, but there's no effect because he's That's already That's extremely strong. rude. 
That's going to bring us to Rasu. Okay. All right. Uh -huh. So, so if I'm reading this right, Ghostly takes two shots. Long thin sharp takes three shots. Short and fat does the stun. That's what I'm. That's that. That's where. That's the theory I'm going to operate on for now. And uh, which which one, which one did you cats shoot at earlier? Ten. We shot. Everyone shot at ten. It probably doesn't do anything if they don't have hands on them. Shoot the hands. Rosa doesn't shoot the hands. She closes to this one over here, and halberds it. And halberds it. Number two here. Yep, number two. Okay, roll it. That's a nineteen to hit. That'll hit. Uh, it's a D ten for this. Yeah. For what it's worth, Mikko, I also would have attacked the actual thing. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, that is uh, 12 damage. Slashing damage. Okay. And go ahead and swing again. And yeah, that's an at 20. Nice. Some of that radiance on there. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a really good idea. Most of these things count as undead, which I don't think they do. That's my last, this is my last one for the day, just so you know. That's fine. I forgive you. You don't get him back for a short rest? Nope, long rest. It burns spell slots, buddy. That's uh, 12 slashing damage. And 23 radiant damage. Okay. As you cleave through this clockwork golem. <laughs> and this one recoils from the hit, as you would expect a moving creature to do with muscles and bones and things. Unlike the first one that got shot, that was like stoic, like a statue. Mm. Moving or staying put? Uh, well, since I do have a reach weapon, it won't cause an attack of opportunity if I back up. Okay. Adrix. I'm stunned. You're stunned. That's true. I mean, you backed up, so now I can't. I can't sneak attack it. Good job. Wait till ready. It. I'll stand up next to it. Yeah. Okay. I really it's, not, it's not your turn. Oh. I thought it was. Nope. This is lair action, yo. Yeah. <laughs> I need Adrix and Red to make a dexterity saving throw, DC 16. I fail it. Sorry, Adrix. I was about to grab you and pull you out of the way, but didn't have the time. No, I Adrix, you, uh, stunned. you don't. You had a turn. Your stun wore off. Because you had a That's turn. A 17. At, you had a turn at 3, and then lair action's at 20. Red past. Alright, well, I'm gonna argue. Roll good. I mean, he's basically stunned. He's Adrix. No. It's, I'm still hit. You're still hit. Okay, Adrix. How much did you fail it by? Uh, what was the DC? 16. I failed it by 13. Fail it by 13. 11 <laughs> points of slashing damage, and you're knocked prone. This room sucks. <laughs> I don't think we ever go anywhere nice. The world isn't a nice place. Uh, so yeah, we'll just go ahead and flip you over. And now it's Birdie's turn. Birdie, what would you like to do? 